Welcome back to my 10 minute astrophotography challenge. This is a fun little series I do on the side to see how far I can take an image in 10 minutes or less. And I've got a very big challenge today with the Rosette Nebula in narrowband with a monochrome camera. As you can see, there's not much to look at, but we're gonna see how far we can take it in a short amount of time. Of course, I don't recommend you rush through your photos. I would take a couple hours, if not a couple days to edit this image, but this is more of just a fun little side thing just to show you what's possible. Because the stacking alone would take at least five minutes, I'm gonna cut that portion out of the workflow. If you'd actually like to learn something and see how to stack your images, how to process them and more, then you can go and watch my original Rosette Nebula editing video where I walk you through step by step. With all that out of the way, let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is a series of level adjustments on all three of my color channels because in the original version, when I was walking you guys through this, I had a very green color cast. That's because there's more H-alpha than there is oxygen or sulfur, and the H-alpha is mapped to green, therefore there's a green color cast. But if I can make them all roughly the same brightness before we add them in as color channels, then that should eliminate any weird problems. And hopefully it works out today. As you're gonna see, uh, you don't wanna do that. <laughs> Let's delete that and try again. Uh, what I was getting at though, is depending on how bright these images are before you stack them together, that's going to affect the overall color balance. And now I'm going to change the mode from grayscale to RGB color. That's going to allow us to create a color image. I already captured the sulfur data. I'll paste it in on red. We'll grab the oxygen data, paste it in on blue. Green is already mapped to H alpha. So there we go. We have a full color image in just a few seconds. That's one of the reasons I want to show you guys this workflow today is because I was initially a little bit afraid of using a monochrome camera because I thought it'd be a lot more work. But I just showed you there, in a few seconds, you can create a full color, beautiful image. Of course, because this is narrowband, this is fake color, you wouldn't actually see a green or a blue rosette nebula like this, but it's still fun to mess around with. And if you're shooting through a lot of light pollution, those narrowband filters are gonna be a big help because you're never gonna be able to get this using the real colors in a light polluted area with just a normal DSLR. Let's continue on. We've got our curves adjustments. It's still looking a little bit green, but nowhere near as bad as the original version. So let's now do some selective color. I'm gonna just lightly move these sliders left and right until we get a color balance we like. More importantly, the yellow channel tends to really affect the greens. And you're free to do whatever you want here. This is actually where I'd recommend you slow down and spend a lot of time because this is gonna have a big impact on your final image. In my case though, I have a 10 minute limit, so I don't really have as much time as I would like. Now after I've done that, I can always go back and add a new selective color and continue to tweak each color channel, like so. Usually on that second selective color, you really can move the colors along nicely. Whereas in the first one, it's just kind of getting things set. All right, I'm not really liking the blues coming out of here, so maybe we'll do that. And then finally we'll go and add a little bit of saturation to the image. And of course, the one time I wanna do a fast video, this thing is lagging like crazy, as we would all expect, nothing's ever easy. All right, I'm gonna flatten this, delete all these layers, cause my computer's running like crap right now. I'm gonna close out of these guys, don't need them anymore. Hopefully that'll speed things up. You know, to be honest, that doesn't look half bad and we're only three minutes in. Of course, we cut out the stacking portion of the video just because that alone takes a long time. But that looks pretty darn good, I'd say. Let's move on though. I'm gonna add a, another layer. And this time we'll do a camera raw filter. If you have another application like Topaz Denoise, a lot of people like that one, now would be a good time to fix the color noise if you haven't done so already. In my case, we'll get it out of the way right now. And this is just a free, easy way to fix the noise in your image without having to buy any more plugins. So I tend to prefer that over some of the other options. Let's move right along with another curves layer. We'll bring that up a little bit, bring this down. I know we still have six more minutes, so we'll make the most of it, but I'm pretty happy with that overall. We might as well try the longer version of our star reduction. I'm drawing a blank though, let's see if I can remember. We'll choose our highlights, move the sliders around, like so. 
That looks pretty good there. I'll hit okay. And actually, now that I'm remembering this, I didn't really like the star reduction in the previous video. It just looked kind of weird, so hopefully this one will turn out a little bit better. If you've seen my full version of this image over on Instagram, then you'll remember that I had like no stars in the photo. That's because I used something called uh, Starnet++, which is a free little application you can get for Windows users. And Starnet++ is pretty darn cool if you can get it to work. In my case, we're not gonna do that today though because that would take at least 30 minutes to run through. There's our star reduction. Doesn't look terrible. And then we'll create a new layer. From here, I'm gonna try and do a little bit of a high pass filter. This should bring out some of those faint dust clouds. We'll just leave it at the default, looks fine. That wasn't necessarily the default if you try to do it on your own, it's just what I happen to have plugged in from earlier. And you can see that really emphasizes those dust clouds a lot better. But I don't want it to apply to the entire sky, so I'll add a layer mask, invert it to turn it off, and then paint it in over the nebula itself. Especially down here where we have those nice dust clouds. Again, ideally I would be doing a better star reduction than the one I just showed you, but we don't have enough time for that today and I don't feel like fiddling around with it. That all looks good. I can uh, hold down the Alt key, click, fill this in. And then finally we'll blur this with filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Good enough. So there we go, we have a nice little high pass to bring out some of those fainter details. I'm still not a big fan of that star reduction, but like I said, if you wanna try something new, look up Starnet++. That's a lot of fun to mess around with, and it should give you better results in some scenarios. Just do a little bit more there. That looks good. I'm going to do one more selective color. If anything, I think the image is getting overly saturated. I'm not a big fan of that. So I can always add in a vibrance layer and just turn that down here in a minute. Let's go to our greens next. There we go, and then finally we'll hit yellows and reds and I think we'll call it a day for that. What you're seeing here, as long as you know some of these tools in Photoshop and you practice, you can get a pretty darn cool photo in a short amount of time. Not that you'd want to do that, like I said I would spend a couple hours doing this if I had the time, but today we don't. And we'll do our little bit of, a little less colors there. We'll add one more curve, and we'll bring down the sky a little bit more. Now if I think that's way too extreme, and I do, I'm going to lower the opacity of that layer. Turn on and off, that looks okay. From here, let's do a little bit of dodging and burning. I don't want to mess up the image too much, but a little bit can hurt. See how it's kind of getting splashy now with this color noise? That would be one more reason to capture a lot more data. I captured about nine hours, but even then, for something like the narrowband images, and especially the Rosette Nebula, you really gotta uh, take your time with it and capture as much information as possible. That will help to reduce some of these problems. Also, the further you really push this thing like I'm doing today, the more this is gonna become apparent. So that doesn't help anything either. Now that we've gotten some more of that color noise gone, the overall image still looks fine, but we got rid of some of the splotches there. And I think we still have a minute or two left. Let's crop it in just a hair more. And when this is done, I want to compare this to the one I spent at least an hour working on. We'll do a side by side and show you, you know, with a little bit of practice in 10 minutes, what you can do compared to a couple hours. And then let's do a light vignette thanks to Raya Pro. That helps to draw your eye back to the center of the image. And I think we'll call it right there. We're almost out of time. That looks pretty darn cool considering where we started off with. Just to give you an idea. Well, you remember, but that was our starting point. Black and white, nothing going on. And we got to there in just 10 minutes. Now what I'd like to do is head over to my other folder and grab my probably two hour long edit of the same image. And here is my final photo that I did uh, about a week ago. 
It's a completely different stylistic take than this one here. The colors are quite a bit different. And in this particular instance, I chose to reduce and actually remove all of the stars except for the cluster here in the middle, which are pretty iconic. As you can see, this is more of a painting than anything, but I wanted to have fun with the star reduction for a change. And here is the actual star reduction image straight out of StarNet++. You notice there's a lot of these really weird splotches by the big stars. There are some downsides to using this, and even if you have a powerful computer, it can take you up to an hour to process this image. Again, just removing all the stars. But that's what helps to bring out the faint nebulosity around the edges of the Rosette Nebula, which in this case you can't really see because there are still so many stars. And this would be another reason I would say to spend a couple days editing your photo. Because in this case, after I did the star reduction, the color balance is kind of whacked out, and I had to spend quite a bit of time working on it. And eventually I got this image here, which I think still looks pretty cool. But if you compare even just these two side by side, notice how much nicer the blues look here. In this one, it's kind of like greenish, which I'm not a big fan of. So if I would have given this image a day to rest, then I could say, hey, you know what? Maybe there still is too much green here. And for that, there's a lot of ways you can reduce it. Maybe I'll just go to my selective color though and mess around with it here. Cause I'm just not a big fan of that green. If you're gonna make it green, you might as well go all the way with it, you know? So that helped to reduce some of the green color cast already. And I don't think that looks half bad. And that is, again, more of a stylistic take on the Rosette Nebula. I'm still going back and forth on what I'd actually like, but it's always fun to just have uh, some time here to explore and see what you can get. And that's all I've got for you today. There's still a few changes I would make to this image, and that's what I've always been talking about. If you go back before you actually publish it, you'll find little things you don't quite like, and that'll save you some headaches in the future. But that's all I've got for you today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.